Hey everyone, thanks for being here. Welcome back to another video. Today, it's a very special time of the year. It is the Sephora Spring Savings Event. So I gathered a bunch of my favorite products to share and put on for you and just let you know why I love these products so much out of all the makeup that I've tried. This is somewhere between like a really pared down capsule collection and just a full all out every single one of my favorite products from Sephora. I wanted to give you a nice in between so you get those really good in-depth recommendations but it's not too overwhelming of a video. Hopefully everything will be linked down below and I will be demoing some of these products, close-ups, all the good stuff but let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to start with a couple skincare products. First is one I would only buy on sale because it is so pricey for the full size but I I just love this moisturizer. This is from Rose Inc. It's their Hydration Replenish Micro Encapsulated Moisturizer. If you saw the short I made with this, it's a really interesting like beaded texture. Honestly, hard to explain unless you just see it for yourselves and feel it for yourselves. I think this is a great gel texture moisturizer, but it has a little bit more moisture feeling to it than a traditional gel that may like dry a little bit quicker. So this I would say if you like a gel texture but you need more moisture from a moisturizer, this is such a good in between if you did want to try it out. It's so fun to use. I love the texture. It's beautiful under makeup. It's just one of my favorite things to apply. So I know it's pricey but it is a really unique formula for sure. I also love this In Beauty Project Bright and Tight Eye Cream. This is a nice tinted eye cream. Also has a little bit of glow to it. So when you apply it under the eyes, it's really great to wear without makeup but it also performs nicely under makeup and concealer as well make sure you let it set for a little bit again one of those like perfectly moisturizing products that doesn't feel too heavy and i love that it has the slight peachy tint slight glow to it just wakes up the under eyes really nicely and love the pump as well for sunscreens i have three favorites all these are mineral by the way i am allergic to chemical sunscreens at least on my face they make me break out i can't tolerate some of them on my body but for my face i definitely just use purely mineral so my first favorite is the say beauty sun visor these are more moisturizing can be a little bit more heavy so i always like to say that if you have more oily skin this is probably not going to be like your favorite formula so this is spf 35 as you can tell this has a slight tint to it so it doesn't like pull as a white cast. I'm really not the best person to test like white cast or tints of things because I am so fair but I can say that the tint in this is not too dark. It's actually almost like this cool grayish peachy color so it works for me and I do really like the glowier texture from feeling a little more dry. They also make a tinted version if you wanted some more coverage. I do prefer this original version because this one just doesn't really give me like enough coverage that I'm comfortable with on its own and I'd rather just you know add a little something or use the next product I'm about to mention but I thought I still wanted to give this one a mention if you like a little bit more tint in your sunscreen ignore how messy this is I do still use this one a lot if I just want a little bit of a tint to go on a walk or something this one I'm holding is a shade three but I think this is my self tan shade I usually use the shade two or one I believe I will have it linked now if you have more combo skin like me and maybe you just don't want as dewy of a sunscreen I love this product and they are now on Sephora just as of recently this is the brand iris and Romeo. This is their best skin days. Not only is this formula so good because it's not too dewy, it's a perfect satin formula. It also is a really good shade for my skin, which can be a difficult thing with tinted sunscreens. They don't have a lot of shades of these, but this is the first shade. And as you can tell, it does have this more like yellowy color to it. But on the skin, it's actually light enough. It doesn't show up orange. It's just beautiful on the skin. Gives you enough coverage as well. Like this with a little bit of concealer is just, it's a gorgeous product. It does come in this big pot. So not like the most sanitary type of vibe. If that bothers you, you might want to use like a spatula or something but i just really love this formula and highly recommend it getting into skin prep and sort of primers getting the base ready for foundation i do really like these bobby brown face bases they have both the face base original this is like the mini size and they also have the eye base really recommend these if you have more dry skin these can be a tad emollient for me especially in the summer but these are really good options like i said if you have dry skin and you really like a super smooth soothing base next are three products that i reach for for my skin type a lot more all of these do incorporate glow in some way i like to have a glowy base even though i do have quite textured skin i just really like having that radiance because i do tend to mattify my foundation quite a lot because I'm more oily so this just gives me exactly what I need so first I wanted to talk about the one that I actually wore in today's video this is the iconic London underglow blurring primer 
primer. I always describe this as the perfect combination between a silicone primer and a glowy primer. It has that silicone feel where it really blurs out your pores and imperfections, but it also has a little bit of glow into it. I feel like this is a highly underrated primer. It's so good. It does have a little bit of fragrance in it. I honestly don't mind it too much and I'm quite sensitive to fragrance. I feel like it fades off. It's not super strong, but I still like to mention that there is fragrance in it. It just gives you the prettiest glowy satin base and really helps with the longevity and smoothness of foundations. So this is such a gem. This is from Iconic London, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that, but yeah, really good one. Now some more like water-based-esque type of glowy bases. First is a classic. This is from Say Beauty. These are the glowy super gels. I have the lighter shade Sun Star Glow. They also have a deeper bronze shade. This is a really great super lightweight, more shimmery base. I don't feel like it's too shimmery where it accentuates texture a ton. It feels very light and comfortable on the skin. So this is a good one if you want glow, but you don't necessarily need any like extra moisture. It just gives you the pearly radiance. Another one that is really similar, but I feel like the glow is slightly more subdued. It's more of like a lotion-y formula, whereas the Say one is really like a gel. This is from In Beauty, the Face Glaze Highlighting Gel Cream. Also comes in a bronze shade. I just like this more light one. It is light enough for fair skin, which I love. And like I mentioned, it is a little bit more lotion-y, so you could use this as a moisturizer if you wanted to. I like to do it just on top for a little extra glow. Moving into base products, for skin tints, I have two to recommend. First is one that I really didn't like at first, but it's kind of grown on me. This is the Rose Ink Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum. The reason I didn't like this at first is because it's so sheer and it really is a super like sheer tint formula, which I don't have like the most use for for my everyday makeup. But if I just want a little bit of tint to the skin, this is what I reach for. It's just a very sheer like tinted moisturizer. This actually looks very similar to the moisturizer where it has those micro encapsulations. So when you do blend it on the skin, those like burst and then you get the pigment. I have the shade 010, which is a very nice shade match for me. A little bit too like cool pink, but pretty decent. And this one just feels really nice and lightweight. But one of my favorites since I tried it is the Iconic London Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint. This, I have the shade Cool Fair. Neutral Fair usually works a little bit better for me, but I will switch between them or mix them. This one is so nice because it gives you, like I would say this is a light coverage product. I would say this is a sheer product. So this actually gives you quite a lot of coverage, but it still feels lightweight. It's really smooth. Also a good combo with the blurring primer from them. Now for foundations, I included lots of different formulas depending on what you're looking for. So let me start with just the one that I'm wearing today. If you want something that is long lasting, really comfortable satin finish, maybe you have more combo skin. This is a really beautiful one and was a surprise hit for me from Smashbox. It's their always on skin balancing foundation. As I mentioned, that's why it's so good for combo skin because I feel like it does like give you moisture, but it's also mattifying at the same time. It has hyaluronic acid and adaptogens. Also, the shade is great, F10. W. This is like a very traditional feeling foundation. Like it just goes on, gives you a lot of coverage, like medium to full coverage. Definitely buildable. You could sheer it out as well. It's very long wearing and gives you coverage. And yet it doesn't really feel like foundation. I really don't like a super heavy feeling foundation if I'm wearing it for a really long time. So if I am planning on, you know, doing a very long day, this would be my pick for longevity and just mattifying properties. I guess sticking with that theme, if you have like super oily skin or you just want something that's like, you don't have to worry about it wearing off like it is just bulletproof basically in any condition this is a classic makeup product and it's for a reason the estee lauder double wear stay in place makeup it just gives you a second skin almost like it does not move off of your face it just is so long wearing definitely more of a matte finish this is the shade 1w1 which is quite yellow for me i feel like i need the neutral shade i don't want to say it's just like it's super long wearing it's not something i would wear every day because it can it is very lightweight, but it also, like, I feel like my pores are, like, that's makeup, you know what I'm saying? But if you want something that's just, like, gonna stay and you don't have to worry about it, this one is so good. Next into my more satin foundations. First is the Kosas Revealer Foundation. This is my favorite foundation for a while. I still really like it. I did run out of my shade, which is the lightest one. Really great, like, neutral olive shade. This has SPF 25 in it as well. This is more of, like, a medium coverage satin dewier formula that can be sheared out but on its own has really good solid medium buildable coverage i wore this all through the summer it doesn't wear extremely long but it wears just long enough where it looks really pretty for a long time not gonna be one you're gonna want to wear like the estee lauder one for like 
12 plus hours but it's really beautiful and my favorite for a reason but i want something that's really smoothing i always reach for the rose ink soft light skin smoothing liquid foundation this is a very like silicone based formula that's slips onto the skin this is the shade 2n fair neutral which i usually mix with the next neutral shade because this one is slightly cool for me even though it's called an olive shade still like i could wear it on its own but it's a little bit better mixed with that next shade but i would say if i were to wear either of them on its own it would be this one still now i don't always recommend brushes that like come with foundations or they made for foundations because you can usually find something that's similar either that you already own or that you could buy but i will really recommend the rose ink foundation brush that they have for this foundation something about this brush i don't have anything else that like applies product like this one does it's a slanted buffing brush but it's not super dense it's this like in between duo fiber brush and usually with like a silicone foundation you might want to like buff it in but this when you like swipe it onto the skin actually looks so beautiful and works amazingly as a combo with the foundation so you might want to pick up both if you're interested in this one by the way it has like medium buildable full coverage still feels really lightweight this one doesn't wear extremely long on me either it could start to bunch up around my chin if i use too much product so i just make sure to go more light handed with it. Lastly, if you want something really dewy, I really love this Westman Atelier foundation stick. I wish it was in a shade I could use because I got this when I was self tanning and now it's just too dark for me. This is the shade Atelier 3. This is so beautiful and I usually do not like cream foundations. Like they just notoriously do not work on my skin. They separate, they're too heavy, but this is the most beautiful cream foundation I've ever tried. And for this brand being so pricey, it would be one that's worth picking up when it is on sale. This I would recommend if you have like maybe normal to drier skin. It does still work on me, even though it's not, again, one of those like longest wearing formulas, but set with a powder. It's just so beautiful. Feels a little bit weightier than like some of those other very lightweight formulas, but yeah, gorgeous. Just one now let's get into the under eye area first is the bobby brown this is their skin corrector stick and extra light bisque really love this because it is truly light enough for fair skin to brighten under my eyes i did a short with this and i only used a little bit of product because you honestly only need a small amount it's hard to tell the difference in the short but in this demo i made sure to put more product on so you can really see the difference this is really creamy so i do recommend using the least amount of product possible if you have more oily skin because it can settle a tiny bit into lines but i just make sure it's really smoothed out before i apply my concealer and then set it well if i do really beautiful and helps to brighten things up and i really like the shape that it comes in just like this oval shape that you can pop under the eyes really ergonomically i guess would be the word for concealers i am very very picky about them so i only have two to recommend first is my favorite under eye concealer the house labs concealer love this it is one of the only under eye concealers that doesn't like crease heavily on me it can settle a little bit but other than that it's so good i have the shade fair golden i could probably do the like fair neutral shade that one's amazing you probably see me use it a million times also really like the rose ink concealer in the lightest shade very fair cool olive shade this is very full coverage don't like this under the eyes but as a face concealer or even like you could just like sheer it out as a foundation it is ultra creamy ultra pigmented and it does wear well if you use a little bit of it can sit slightly heavy so i always like to warn make sure you use a small amount of product i have been curious about the natasha denona concealer if you try that let me know what you think but these two my faves. For setting powders, I have a lot of different options because depending on what you like, but they also all sort of do different things. First is my all around pick, which would be the Laura Mercier setting powder. This is my mini version. I also have a jumbo version that I got during a sale, but this is like, if you need oil controlling, if you need to set your under eyes and not have them crease, this is my favorite go-to for everywhere. Another product from Laura Mercier, this one is the brightening powder. Now this does have a shimmer in it, so it does brighten up. It is truly translucent their translucent version this is like a slightly yellow tint if you're very fair it might darken your foundation just a tad but this one is a truly translucent one this is the full size by the way because it's kind of just used as an under eye brightening powder at least that's how i like to use it really pretty doesn't control oil as much as the original but it gives you this nice brightness wherever you need it and then also wanted to mention the other lower mercier powder which is the translucent loose setting powder but this is the ultra blur version i have a comparison of this 
versus the original. This one has a slight more sheen to it, which I personally don't prefer under my eyes. But if you want a face powder that's not quite as flat as the original, this one is really gorgeous. I saw they came out with like a baked version of this, which I'm curious about. But yeah, this one is a good one if you like a slight more satiny, glowy finish. Oh, I forgot to mention this with the foundations, but my powder foundation pick would be the Bare Minerals Bare Pro 16 Hour Foundation. The shade Fair 10 Neutral is perfect. I haven't had luck with their loose foundation, but this pressed powder version is so long wearing. It is has so much coverage to it. I usually like to use this just as like a boost to my coverage, but you could also wear it on its own. Really prefer the pressed version of their foundations. Now, if you're looking for a setting powder that has like a slight tint to it, I love this one from Bobbi Brown. It's the Vitamin Rich Pressed Powder in the shade Yellow, which I thought might be too dark for me, but it just has a very slight yellow tint to it, which really can help with like dullness and redness. I don't feel like it actually deepens or like changes the color of my foundation too much, which is really important. So love this one. It also has the perfect amount of like, it's a really satiny formula. It is like truly beautiful and just like melts onto the skin. Next, if you're really fair and you're just looking for a truly translucent all around great powder, I really love the Bare Minerals Original Mineral Veil, but the pressed version they came out with. If you tried their Loose Mineral Veil, you know that it has this very like peachy tint to it. So when they came out with this one, that is just like completely clear, but also very mattifying. I really love this. Use this all the time just to set my face. I also think that the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder, my personal favorite's Ethereal Light, because it's basically white. It's another gorgeous like topper powder just to add glow in any areas where you feel like you're looking a little bit dull. I wouldn't use this under my eyes, but just as like an all over powder. It is truly beautiful. I just, Hourglass, again, one of those brands that's really worth picking up during the sale. Now for bronzers, I didn't pick out too many because I just did a bronzer video with all of my favorites, but I will just mention the ones that I used today, which is the Hourglass Nude Bronze Light. This gives me the perfect amount of warmth without being too orange. I love a slight shimmery bronzer and that one just delivers on that. Also really like this West Atelier highlighter as a bronzer. It's their highlight stick in the shade Brulee. Also really wanna try their contour stick. This one is gorgeous. It is super dewy, but really pretty. Now for contours, if you're looking for truly cool toned contours, these are two of my favorites. First, if you want a cream, the Fenty Beauty Contour Cream in the shade Amber. This is just the perfect like stone gray shade. You only need a small amount of this. It can be a little bit too much because it is so like pigmented. It's not overly pigmented though. It's like a nice in-between. Just buff this in with a brush and you really get such a nice contour with it and it is super long wearing. My favorite powder contour is one I recently tried from Sephora collection, which I believe is 20% off for everybody. It might be more than that, or maybe it's 15, but this is the Fair to Light Contour Powder. Again, very stone gray shade. You'll see me using this in the application. I like to take like a little domed brush and just carve out the cheekbones and the jawline, and it's just perfect, not too pigmented. It's actually quite sheer makes it very usable. For blushes, again, didn't want to go too crazy because I have so many blush guides that I recently uploaded, but I wanted to mention some that I used. So first are the Bare Minerals bronzers. I forgot to mention these. I was actually gonna mention these in my bronzer video because they're a blush bronzer hybrid. I actually really like this one called Kiss of Rose, which is slightly darker, but this just is like, you can use it as a bronzer. It just gives you a little bit of warmth without being like, an orange bronzer if you know what i'm saying they're quite glowy so really pretty just like in between product and they also have the kiss of pink one this is more leaning on like a blush to me but if you have more fair skin well i like both of these but depends kind of what undertone you want this one gives me more of a bronzy vibe and this one gives me more like a blushy vibe this lawless blush in the shade of vintage love it's a beautiful matte blush formula it's someone i wore today nice mauvey cool tone pink for creams i love the rose ink cream blushes this one is the shade Heliotrope. A lot of pretty gorgeous shades. This one has a little bit of shimmer in it. It's more of like a thick cream blush. I don't know how to say that without it seeming like it's a bad formula. It's not. It's beautiful because it is thick. It sort of like stays on your cheeks really well, if you know what I'm saying. It just has such nice longevity versus this one, which is more of like a thin, creamy, dewy formula from Iris and Romeo as well. But I really love this one. This is the shade Rosy Glow. They smell really good. 
a little bit more sheer. It's just a pretty, like if you want more of a dewy wet look, I would say this one would be good. Next for highlight, the Dior Luminizer Palette. I think they still have this. I don't use all of these shades, but the white and the pink, I love. The white is more of like a white gold, but it's not super strong like a NARS Albatross type of highlight, which was my first highlight, by the way. But yeah, these two mix are on their own. I use these as eyeshadow. I use these as highlight. It's just they serve me in so many different ways. Next, if you want a glow, but you want it to be really subtle, I love this highlight from Laura Mercier. It's called their Highlight 01 Matte Radiance Baked Powder. It is light enough for fair skin. This is freaking gorgeous. I feel like it's a step above the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. That one's you could wear as a highlight, but it's very sheer. This one's like a step above it. It's not a full-on metallic highlight. It's just it is so beautiful. It is just one of those products that, again, I think it's underrated. If you want like a full on, just regular strong highlight, I love the House Labs highlighter, especially the shade Moonstone. They had a silver highlight and I was like, yes, please. Like this is just such a nice shade for fair skin. Really hard to find highlights that are light enough and also cool enough. And this one just hits all those boxes. The one I have on today, which I also love the shade of, Westman Atelier. Again, great brand to shop during the sale because they're so pricey without that discount. The Lit Up Highlight Stick. This is the shade Lit, which is a white purple. It has a really sheer base and it kind of just gives you like that ethereal glow. These are really dewy, so they don't last like a super long amount of time and they are, just beware, they are a very dewy product. So if you have very dry skin, you'd love these. I like these in moderation. I just love the shade, it's so pretty. Next for brows, I don't have a lot of products because I am truly a drugstore brow person, but these are my favorites. The Kosas Brow Pop line you can't go wrong with. I love the clear brow gel. This is just my favorite one. Mine's a little dirty, sorry. They also have the tinted version, which isn't my favorite. I just don't like tinted brow gels that much, but if you do like a tinted one, that one is beautiful. And then the Brow Pop one, I just have the original. They also have the nano version, depending what kind of thickness you prefer. My favorite shade by the way i can use blonde or taupe they're both really good shades for my hair i love the packaging and these are just tried and true favorite now for eyeshadow i do have quite a lot of recommendations first is one this is literally their old packaging it's so old i probably need to get rid of this but the ilia this is the necessary palette in the cool tones this i feel like is also like slightly underrated it is kind of pricier for like a smaller palette but if you just want something that's pared down and you love cool tones i love these formulas they have four matte in here and two shimmers and i feel like you can create so many looks with this and it's also still just like a small pared down palette it is so pretty and it's just been one of my favorites for a very long time next from miss charlotte tilbury i would say most of her products are for me they like never are that good like they have the marketing down, right? But in terms of the actual products, they never hit home for me that much in terms of like, yeah, this is worth the price. But one of my favorite products from her, I would say are the eyeshadow palettes. You get such pretty shimmers in here. You have three shimmers in one matte, but also for the price, you might be better off getting the Elia one. The thing with these is they just have so many more shades. If you like more of a pared down palette, I do think they are really pretty. Now, if you want just some like fun eyeshadows to play with, Danessa Myrick's Color Fixes, just such a fun brand. You can mix these. They wear so well. They're just like one of those artistic products that make you have fun with your makeup. This is the shade Exposed. This is Journey. They have metallics. They have matte. They have glazes. Anything you want. They got it. Next is a newer palette, but the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes. I do have the warm version of this palette, but this new neutral version is by far my favorite now. These are really pretty like beginner friendly shadows. They're not super pigmented. They're a little paired back. So they're really blendable. These are very like desaturated colors. So they're gorgeous for fair skin or if you have cool undertones, these are great. This is just such a great little matte everyday palette. Now, if you've been wanting a Natasha palette, really good time to get them because they are on sale. First, let's start with Xenon. I love both of these so much. I really can't pick a favorite, but I have videos on both these, by the way, if you wanna see like full looks and swatches. But this is the Xenon palette, which is a lot more like cool blue grays. Doesn't look that wearable, but honestly, I find this very wearable. So many fun, unique colors. It's also one that doesn't like show up great on camera the nuances of it, but yeah, really beautiful. But if you wanted something like a little bit more wearable, the I Need a Nude is so pretty. This just has all those taupey metallics. It does have like a slight warm shade in there. This is just perfect if you have fair skin and you like more cool neutrals. Like this is the palette she made for us and I am 
I'm not mad at it. It's so gorgeous. These were my first Natasha palettes and I was not disappointed. Next, I love these Bobbi Brown eyeshadow sticks. They have dual ended versions, but they also have the regular versions. I used this one today, which is Dusty Mauve. This as an eyeliner, so gorgeous. These are metallic, but they also have matte finishes. They are super long lasting. They do not smudge even on oily eyelids. When I went on vacation, I literally took like two of these and that was my eyeshadow and they just are so easy to use and blend, but so beautiful and a lot of pretty color options. Another really similar product are the Laura Mercier ones. Just depends which one you like. Personally, use the Bobbi Brown ones a little bit more, but this one is the shade Smoke, which is a really pretty like gray steel shade. I do have some eyeliners. Again, a category of makeup I always go to drugstore for. I don't think necessarily a lot of eyeliners that are worth it unless they're a little bit more fun. Like this one from Danessa Myrick, which is one of their like shimmery eyeliners. This is like a purple shift, really unique. If you did want a liquid liner though, the KVD tattoo liner. I've been using this since high school. It is the best. It does not run. It does not like come off of your lids. It just stays on super black, super thin tip, brush tip, which I love. I just love it. Mascara, I do not have the one here I wanna recommend. My recommendation is the Alia Limitless Lash Mascara. I've tried tons of other from Sephora, but none of them have lived up to my wear standards for me to recommend them. There's a lot of pretty ones, but not a lot of them wear well. The only other one I could think of that actually does wear well is the Smashbox Super Fan Mascara. They also have the primer with this but the Ilia one is definitely my favorite. Also the Ilia powder, I've been meaning to pick that up. I need to get it during the sale. The under eye powder, just like their translucent powder, amazing, so smooth. I wish they gave you more product because it's pricey, but that one is stunning. For liners, I also don't have the one I wanna recommend here because I ran through it. The Sephora collection, the gel liner in the shade Nudist is one of my favorites of all time. Actually matches my lip color. It is like creamy, so it's not super long lasting, but really recommend that one. And the Sephora collection has the extra discount, but I do also really like the Smashbox lip liners. I'm not sure if these are on Sephora. I just grabbed it as a backup, but let's move on to lipsticks and then I'll finish with like my sort of balmy options. So first is the Rose Ink Lipstick. I love this one in the shade Eloquent. I thought this would be so dark, but it's like a really balmy, moisturizing like lipstick formula. It's so unique. It's so beautiful. Really true cool tone purple. And it's one of my favorite lipsticks I own. It's not like super dewy on the lips. It's just like a balmy wash of color. It's so gorgeous. Also a big fan of the Merit Beauty lipsticks. Baby is my favorite, which is a neutral pink. Does not pull warm. These are more moisturizing and full pigment. I also like the shade 1990, which is more of like a brown. Now, if you did want a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick, I would recommend one of the more moisturizing formulas that she has. The matte formulas are just, they can be a bit drying depending on like the state of your lips. Like if you already have dry lips, those can be, they're just not the best like matte formula. I feel like I like the Makeup by Mario mattes a little bit better, but this is, I forget from which collection, but it's the nude romance shade which is actually like one peach shade that doesn't pull too warm on me but if you did our dead set on a charlotte Silberry lipstick i would just say make sure you get a moisturizing formula unless you feel like you can handle the matte next the one i'm wearing today is the urban decay vice bond in the shade og back talk the whole back talk line is like these cool undertone lipsticks which i love this is my favorite neutral shade though it's so light i hated these at first because i didn't know how to apply them but you have to apply them let them dry and then they're like a liquid lipstick formula like with the longevity of it but they have the shine of like a satiny lipstick and they feel really lightweight so very unique formulas just make sure you use them correctly next for balms and glosses i love the lawless cherry vanilla balm these are just a nice little tinted lip balm like not much else to say about them I actually like the scent even though I don't usually like cherry. I'm interested in more shades of this. It's just like a really nice satiny balm. This one has a little bit more pigment to it. The Elia Balmy Tint Hydrating Lip Balm. This is the shade Wanderlust, which is quite dark, but like it gives me a really pretty like plummy red just wash of color. Really nice to like wear on the go, put in your bag. I do have a full swatch video of these if you're interested seeing how all the different shades look on me. Now for glosses, I also really like the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Glosses. We'll warn you, these are a bit thick. They can be a little bit goopy. I don't personally mind that too much. I really like 
how occlusive and balmy they feel but if you don't like any like stickiness in your gloss you might not like this but this is the like big queen size version of it just perfect like tint of red now if you do want like a glossy balm that is not sticky at all i really like the bare minerals mineralist glossies glossy glosses <laughs> lip gloss balm in the shade serenity i thought this would be like too warm for me but it's actually so pretty to wear on its own or with just a lip liner put a little bit on today mm. so smooth the scent isn't my absolute favorite it's like a little bit fruity but i don't mind it too much because the shade is just gorgeous and then i did also want to give a mention to volor lashes these are the ones that i'm wearing today which are the effortless lashes they have so many different styles if you want something really dramatic or more natural that i like to wear they have a lot of different collections they are a bit pricier for like lashes versus ardell they have a little bit of a thicker band but these are really durable so like you can wear them for probably 20 times and they like still if you take good care of them they just have so many more uses in them versus our dell pairs which i could feel like i only get like one to two maybe three uses out of those if i really push it but if you wanted to like get a good pair this is the style would i lie which i think is so pretty it has such a nice tapered shape like i mentioned they have many different styles depending on what you like okay now my voice is shot but that means it was a good sephora recommendations video i hope you enjoyed it and found some good products to try out no pressure to shop if you don't need anything thank you for watching i will put another video on the screen here so we can keep hanging out maybe check out one of my swatch videos about the palettes or the lip balms whatever you're curious about i'll put something here but i'll also link my other videos below so thanks for watching and i'll see you next one bye